Thank you for a very profound and uh, far-reaching introduction to the EIT in the kicks. And uh, since uh, education is at your helm, I think one could not have done it better to pre-inform the people what we are doing and what to expect and why we all encourage you to join us. So I feel in my presentation I like a little bit to go into the philosophy which is behind the EIT and the kicks, and I guess we all agree they are gigantic societal challenges. This is the largest glacier in Austria, the Pasterz. When I was five years old, I stepped from the parking lot down and my grandfather told me, you are now standing up on a glacier. I tried to repeat this journey about 20 years ago when my children were still small and we had to climb down more than 150 meters. So there are challenges around. And what we do believe is that innovation comes to rescue and can help, I think, to solve the problems and the challenges of our society. As we know, there's a lot of confusion about what innovation is. We mix it up with discovery, with invention and translation, and only then we realize innovation is when it really comes back to the people. I highlight this with one example. Most of you would say Alexander Fleming has delivered penicillin. The reality is he discovered with his ingenious mind by serendipity in the year 1929 <coughs> he discovered on an agar plate by serendipity a mold secreting a substance which was killing bacteria. He realized the importance of his discovery and he tried to isolate it and he gave it up after two years and said it will never work in humans because it's too toxic and you need to apply it at a concentration which not be tolerated by the body. And then it took 14 years until a team of physicians, chemists and pharmacists at the eve of the Second World War picked up the topic again and have been driving it into clinical trials. And only in 43 it finally came as a safe and with uh, the wanted result, uh, efficacy drug back to the people and has, if you want so, not only changed our life after the war, it may have been even decisive for the war and we all know what would have been the alternative. So with this story in mind, please realize we have all the ingredients and we still have the Alexander Flemings in Europe in many positions and at many groups. We have top class universities, we have top class research institutes, we have uh, hubs of good science, we have more and more center of excellences, we have good education, we have fantastic corporations, we have small companies and businesses and I think we have even already a network between them. But we all agree we are not delivering at the level we would like to deliver. And this is just to show where could be the smoking gun. And this chart is basically only showing a one simple statistic. If you take all innovative companies which are existing today in the United States, in Europe and in the rest of the world, and you say how many of them have been set up in the last 25 years. You're coming up with the answer, these are only 2% in Europe, it's about 20% in the United States. Make a counter check. Could you easily name Bill Gates, Bill Rutters, or I think uh, other names which are connected to biotech companies or IT companies as readily as this is occurring in the United States? And the honest answer is not. So we have too few people really taking fresh and good ideas from universities and driving them back to the people. So, why is it so important to have entrepreneurs? Because entrepreneurs are highly linked to people who are risking and betting their money onto solving the problems of the next generation. Namely, as an example, venture capital. The red line is showing the anniversary investment of venture capital per GDP in the United States the green line is showing the same figure per GDP for continental Europe and the blue line is uh, just as an example that there are differences in Europe for the UK. So there is this yin yang. If you don't have people taking and picking up fresh ideas, you are not people willing to risk their money on this. So the result of this is of course that we are not getting enough 
entrepreneurs driving forward new ideas. So why is the entrepreneur so important? And since I'm still a scientist, I think I refer to a scientist who thought about this many, many decades ago. I think it's uh, Joseph Schumpeter, uh, Nobel Prize laureate for the Nobel Prize of Economy. And I think this phrase says it all. It says, the entrepreneur drives economy by combining assets, including technologies, in new ways, creating new opportunities, and markets and new economics and new economic values, and the eagerness of millions of peoples, of consumers, to get these new products. And if you talk about healthcare, this could be even patients. So we have to follow this advice that we need a brand of people making a change. And I guess this is the strategy we have been crystalling out at the EIT. The EIT is all about to seed ecosystems in Europe that help to interconnect, to intereducate and I think to breed entrepreneurs, but not to be underestimated, we have a big crisis and many big corporations, we also need intrapreneurs, we need people who from within take fresh ideas and they are carrying it uh, in the existing organizations. And this is, so to say, the mission which has been already nicely phrased and summarized by Madame Vasilio. So the EIT may be unlike many other public funding programs in the arena of research and I think in the arena of education has the entrepreneur in being in the driver's seat of the innovation. And I guess it is a journey which was entrepreneurial in itself because we have done everything for the first time. When we met in 2008 for the first time as a governing board of the EIT, it was a remarkable date. It was the 15th of September 2008. Only some of you may remember it was a day when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. And it's interesting, you could say, is this uh, something to be resigned because it was foreseeable that this would lead to an economic crisis? Or is it something which you could also take as a positive challenge? And I remember in this first discussion of the board, we said, it's a chance. It's a chance to come now back to Europe and think we have to write new paradigms. So, the effect and the end of the day, what the EIT is driving from the student to the entrepreneur, from ideas to products, from the lab to the customers. And having stated this, I have to say, this has not been an easy journey. And like all entrepreneurial journeys, and I know what I'm talking about, you have to take risk. It's not easy. And I have to say, we who have been the board members and the people at the headquarters and the three kicks, as well our colleagues in the commission. We had to convince others that this is the right way. And if you drive a new paradigm, you are double, triple watched. I think I know this from science. If you make a new statement, you really have to convince your peers. So we joined together in this journey and we were really able, basically, to get uh, the people lining up behind us. I don't like to repeat in depth, uh, but maybe some other interesting numbers in complementing what uh, Madame Vasilio is telling you. It is, for example, amazing in this short journey, more than 14,000 students have been applying for our courses because they highly regard them, because they are interdisciplinary and they make business knowledge bring and brought together with uh, technology knowledge and scientific knowledge. So we could unfortunately only take only 13 applicants and this was this course is prepared by the three kicks. Uh, we have educated up to this stage 318 master students. This is for a young institute a remarkable achievement if you have to remember that the, most of the kicks became only operational in the year 2010-2011. And then other remarkable numbers, for example, that we have more than 180 startups at this stage. And as we are not an institute which from the day one says we have a full-fledged skeleton, we know now comes the next challenge. The next challenge is how can we make out of these small businesses businesses that will have impact? How can we secure their financial background in encouraging, for example, business angels and venture capital to invest in them? So the achievements are certainly a good, I think, bolster, I would say, now 
to sit on and to say how can we drive the whole thing forward. So I feel the two things we have to achieve in the short-term and mid-term future is to secure the quality growth of the first three kicks. And the other one is to open the call for the next kicks which we have done and making sure that we get the same quality and I think it would be even nice for us, the EIT as a holding, if some of these kicks come with entirely new ideas how to drive such ecosystems and innovation hubs. And I think it has been announced, the first call for the new kicks has been opened and will close in September. So this has been an exciting journey, a journey which I would say I have to say one of the more better parts of my life to run as uh, six years as a board member and uh, for the time being three years being a chairman. And I think of course I also have some visions for the future. So before we go in the future I just like to see how rapid this journey was. It was so to say a discussion by a group of smart people in the years 2006 until 2009 how to exactly form the concept. In particular, after 2008, the first board has been meeting, we could concretize what we really like to do. 2010 and 2013 was a seed and the startup phase. And since I've been setting up my life in companies, uh, or having the setting up my life companies, I know this is the most exciting part, but also the part where you face sometimes the biggest resistance, the biggest challenges, but maybe also the most euphoric part. We are now moving in, I would say, a consolidation phase, but it also means we have to maintain creativity and innovation in the driver's seat. And I think to this end, it's of course very comforting that uh, we who have been fighting for the EIT and at, uh, driving its advocacy have been achieving this 2.7 billion budget. So what are, so to say, my visions for the next years until 2020? Well, I hope if uh, in this live stage I will be and I will revisit some of these conferences maybe at this stage in the year 2020, it will have been fulfilled that we have done a great contribution to overcome the silo mentality which you still have in Europe between the various players of the knowledge triangle but also in between the countries. It is just simply not yet functioning that a venture capitalist from London realize maybe a good university institute is in Budapest and has a clue to the answer and there is nearby a business school which has even opened the horizon of the students to start up a business. The other thing is I hope and I think maybe Richard you will be still around and entertaining educational program in Europe that the term entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship in the arena of innovation will be an accepted paradigm. We still sometimes talk to people and they don't understand what we are talking about. But I also do believe we have to show that seed money is an investment and leads to sustainability and I think it is our ambition that the EIT kicks after a certain number of years are sustaining themselves financially and not forever, so to say, depending on public investment. Last not least, the most important thing is Europe is a great continent and I'm proud to live at this continent and I come from a family who has seen many European countries. But one thing I also have to state, we have not to overestimate how important we are and we really have to say it is important if you build up global ecosystems in innovation with impact, they have to become visible in the United States, in China, and they have to interact, to interact with those places because many solutions we need to seek are global problems and they can be only solved by global approaches. So I hope that the uh, kicks, the current one and the future one, will be attractive places to partner with in other parts of the world. So I look forward to this educational conference and I wish you all an enjoyable day here in this fantastic ambience which is apparently a former factory and most likely there was once an entrepreneur risking money and building at this place a factory. We unfortunately, I would not know what they have done but certainly it may have been something with machine tools but uh, this is maybe the view of a molecular biologist being in a fabric hall. Thank you so much and have a nice meeting. <laughs>